Did you know that colors can evoke different sets of emotions? The psychology of color plays a role in everyone's day-to-day -day life. With color influencing in modern day branding, marketing, and quality of foods to intrigue their customers. All of this is possible to one thing called dyes. Now with dyes, we're going to be talking about the importance of it due to the lack of acknowledgement in everyone's day-to-day -day life. To talk about this importance, we'll be going over the dyes of its roots of origin. Then we'll be mixing in with the popularity of the people. And lastly, coloring out its usage in foods and products in everyday life. Now, dyes might be easy to use, but its history is not as simple. With ancient traces in Egypt as far back as 1500 BCE, with candy makers ex using natural extracts and wine to improve the appearance of their product. With more recently, archaeologists have discovered indigo dyed fabrics from Huaca Perita, a northern Peruan ceremonial mound. With traces of this being as far back as 6,200 years ago, it is one of the oldest known relics known to date. With more popular natural extracts being used by the Romans in their Tyrian purple dye, they used this dye by making it by boiling snails in lead vats. Now, you likely won't be able to afford this dye due to the lengthy process of making it and the difficulty of extracting these snails efficiently making it so only the extremely wealthy can be able to afford it. And later on, during the Victorian era, or the Victorian era, an accidental discovery of a dye called mauve was made, being synthetic. Made by a person named William Henry Perkin is the product of dichromate oxidization of impure aniline. And then they use specific methods to make specific colors, for example, on candies. For red candies, they use something called sulfide of mercury, yellow, chromate of lead, green, copper acetate. Now, during the 18 or 1900s, they used radium as a dye before its discovery of its radioactivity with its radiating glow and antiques. Now, with this discovery, they discovered many other dangerous colors, such as lead white, red lead, Naples yellow, vermilion, uh, radium green, and uranium orange. These colors have one thing in common, and it's that it's all used with metals we shouldn't interact with. Now, with all these people passing on due to the dangerous dyes they've been using, only one thing's been clear, and that's the improved production of these dyes in the Industrial Revolution. Due to this, it can also be called the Colored Revolution, with the mass production of fabricated clothing, and antiques, such as the colored magazine spreading its information all around the world. With this, they can be able to put colors on trading cards all the way up to family portraits for a family home. Now, for the psychology of color, it has been tied to evolutionary strategy of discovering what animals are dangerous up to foods we can and cannot eat. However, this has suddenly shifted into people jumping on the coloring train of jumping into clothing stores and shopping for foods that they are not known to. With people wanting to express themselves with fabricated statements of clothing, along with feeling unique from the crowd by eating weird foods. Now, to tie back to the negativities of using dyes, hat makers would often use mercury on their, 
on making these hats, which led to lead poisoning as well as them being hmm, as well as the origins of the Mad Hatter from Alice in Wonderland and their books. Now, due to the exposed explosion of the dia on the slide, I think it's time to wrap things up. With the sad backstories of how dia was made up to the usage and insanity of the hat makers and its poor startup usage, I think it is something we should acknowledge with our daily lives. And while I clean up this messy scene, I want you to start thinking about how colorful the world is around you. Thank you.